Hi guys. Tonight's lesson is Unit 7, Sections B and D, Identifying the Domain and Range, looking at graphs primarily, and we'll also try to determine whether or not those graphs are functions. Okay, before we get into it, let's review our definitions of domain and range. The domain of a function is a set of all possible input values, often referred to as the x variable which produce a valid output from a particular function. It's a set of all real numbers for which a function is mathematically defined. Range. The range is a set of all possible output values, usually the variable y or sometimes expressed as f of x which results from using a particular function. Now before we start to look at the graphs I thought it might be a good idea to look at the number line. Remember in the olden days you'd see a number line, it would have zero in the middle, it would go off in a positive direction and continue forever, and it would also go backwards or in a negative direction and again continue on forever. Those dot 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 dots mean this line goes on forever in both directions. Now when we graph solutions on this number line, we have solid circles and open circles on our endpoints. We use a solid circle or dot if that value is part of our solution. And we note that by looking at the less than or greater than or equal to signs. Now we have an open dot on that value if it's not part of the solution. And when it's not part of the solution, we see that we have a less than sign or a greater than sign, not an or equals to. Okay, so looking at the first example, if x is greater than 2, I'm just going to plot 2, I'm going to have an open circle on 2, and I'm going to shade everywhere x is greater than 2. And hopefully this is all reviewed for you. Letter B, x is less than or equal to negative 3. I'm going to throw a negative 3 on my number line, and I'm going to graph wherever x is less than that value. Now remember, less than a negative, it goes off to the left. Negative 3 is part of the solution, so I'll put a solid dot on 3, because that matches up with the or equal to, and then I'm going to shade left. And if you ever get confused, ask yourself, pick a number from that area, let's say negative 4, plug it in for x, is negative 4 less than or equal to negative 3? And that would be true. Now letter C is a little bit different, it's what we call a compound inequality. Solution is anything that's sandwiched between a negative 4 and a positive 3. So on my number line, I'm going to show a negative 4. I'll show a positive 3 over here. X has to be between those two, and whenever you're reading your solution with an inequality, you always read it from the X. You don't really pay any attention to how these are sh the direction of the, the arrow goes. So if I cover up the negative 4, I see X has got to be less than 3. X is less than 3. So I want everything in this region. And if I look at the other side of it, and I read it from the x, it says x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So I want stuff that's greater than or equal to negative 4. So I want this area in the middle. My endpoint of 3 will have an open circle. My endpoint at negative 4 will have a closed circle because of the or equal to. And that's the solution. Now looking at letter D, Again, start with the x. Say to yourself, x is less than negative 5. So we're going to plot negative 5. x is less than negative 5. So my solution set, my values for x, are everything that's in this negative region. So I want to shade everything to the left of negative 5, because x is less than negative 5. And then I'm going to have an open circle on negative 5, because it's not part of my solution. Save the u-tries for tomorrow. Look at the top of page 2. Now sometimes they give us the answer and we have to come up with what the inequality would be. Now this graph doesn't look so great, but there's an open circle on 4 and it's shaded to the left and the arrow means it goes on forever. So my solution set for x is this region right here. So I'm going to start by writing my inequality or my x value, then I'm going to put my inequality symbol I want everything that's less than the value 4. So I'm going to say x is less than 4. It's an open circle, so I'm going to use the less than sign. 
looking at letter B, it's a little bit different. It's a compound inequality. I have an open circle on negative 2, a closed circle on 4, and a shaded line between them. So my solution, everything for x, is in this region. So when I rewrite this as a single inequality, I know that I have one endpoint that has negative 2. I have the other endpoint, which is a positive 4. x goes between them. x is less than 4. x is also greater than x is greater than negative 2. And one of these should be an or equal to because I have a closed circle here. So I'm going to change that one. When you read this inequality, it's negative 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 4. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And whenever you write it as a single inequality, two separate inequalities, as a single inequality, these should be less than signs. If you see anything other than that, question yourself because it shouldn't make sense. All right, let's move down and look at something we should already know. Example number three, letter A. We've seen these ordered pair charts before. Um, when you're picking out the domain, as we've already said, domain values are represented by the variable x. So everything in this chart under the letter x shows up in my domain. My domain is negative 2, 0, 2. The range is my y values, so my solution for range will be 4, 0, 4. Now remember, you don't have to repeat the 4, but it's not wrong if you do. When you look at this, can you tell if it's a function just by looking at the values? One of the ways you can is by looking at your x values specifically, making sure that none of them repeat. Since none of these x values repeat, we have a function. Now letter B, looking at the mapping. Domain, again, are your inputs. Range are your outputs. So the domain for this function would be Paul, Dan, and Doyle. And the range would be the outputs. It looks like 31 and 35. Now is this one a function, yes or no? Well, does x repeat? I don't think x is going to repeat. I have Dan and Doyle that both match up with 31, but that makes 31 repeat itself. It doesn't mean that any of your input values repeat themselves. So this one is also a function. Now when you look at letters C, D, E, and F, this is where it's going to get a little tricky. To figure out whether they're a function or not, we use the vertical line test. I think you're already familiar with this. And we can see that this graph will fail the vertical line test. If I draw a line through it, I will hit that graph two times. Function, it is not. Now to figure out the domain and range, remember domain consists of your x values. I actually use that vertical line test again, and I say, okay, where along the x-axis does this graph exist? When x is negative 5 back here, the graph does not exist. At negative 4, this graph does not exist. At negative 3, still doesn't. But at negative 2, when x is negative 2, I have y values. And this graph exists at 0, at 1, at positive 2. But when x equals 3, that graph doesn't exist anymore. So I always take my pencil, I slide it along the x-axis, and that tells me my domain. So this picture runs from negative 2 to positive 2. And I actually write that as a compound inequality. Starting with negative 2, I'm going to assume that it's less than or equal to x, that these values are included, unless I see obviously open circles there. And then I'm going to say it goes all the way up to positive 2. Now for some reason, x is usually a little bit easier on the graph than y. But when I'm looking for the range values, I just flip my pencil and say, hey, does this graph exist anywhere y is less than this value? Turns out, when y is negative 5, this graph does not exist. But when y is 4, it exists. So I take my horizontal pencil, I go all the way up, this graph exists when y is 0, when y is 1, 2, 3, and it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, we're maxing out where y is 4. So for my range, I start at negative 4, 
I end at positive 4, and instead of x in the middle, I'm going to put y in the middle. And again, I will assume that those endpoints are included. The other thing I want to mention too, whenever you're writing the domain and range, you always start with the smaller, or smallest, smaller of the two values, um, and then your inequality will make the most sense. Okay, jumping ahead to letter D. First of all, will it pass the vertical line test? Is it a function? Absolutely. The domain. This graph has arrows on the end. So as you're going backwards, or as you're try trying to start when x is negative, this graph exists. And I can't think of a place along that x-axis where this graph will not exist. So it's out here somewhere at negative infinity, and it goes out forever to positive infinity. So when your domain runs from negative infinity to positive infinity, or along the x-axis, it goes on forever, we say the solution is, or the domain is, all reals. Now looking at what the y values for this line graph, when I put my pencil, it's not as obvious, because this is a pretty flat line, but this line will go up forever, and it will go down forever. So it starts somewhere out at negative infinity. If we're off the page here, this line is off the page also, but it's going to keep on going down, like I said, forever. So since it's going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, that solution or that range will also be all reals. Sometimes it takes quite a few graphs before the concept clicks, but once it does, it's not so bad. Looking at letter E, is that one a function? Nope. Any vertical line can hit this graph two times or more than once, so that would be a no. Domain for this one, domain, remember you're going along your x-axis, vertical line test, graph starts when x is negative 4, and this graph, it has arrows on it, it's going to go forward forever, so this will not end. So my solution here is anytime x is greater than or equal to a negative 4. Now the range part for this one, take a deep breath, this one's a little tough. Where does this graph start to exist? Well, I like to start at infinity, or as far down as I can go, but this line is going to go down forever. Sure, it's going out faster, or going to the right faster than it's going down, but it'll still go down forever. And this line will go up forever. So looking at it when y is 0, it exists, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. It's going to keep on having values. It will never stop having values when you're going down or when you're going up. So this is going to be another solution where it's all reals. This graph will exist down at negative infinity and up at positive infinity. If that's confusing, I get it. We're going to look at a few more graphs in class, so hopefully it'll clear up the more you look at. All right, now our last graph for the night. A little bit different. Let's answer function question first. Vertical line test. It's going to fail right off the bat here at negative 3. Both those dots would hit that graph. Notice this graph's not continuous, but it's still considered a, a relation. So you want to take a look at it, see if you can figure out whether or not it's a function, and this one will fail the vertical line test. Now, domain values. It's anywhere x exists. So if you have a point where there's an x value, then you have it part of your domain. So coming across your line here, when x is negative 3, I've got y values. When x is 1, I've got a y value. When x is two or 4 and 5, I have y values. So my domain will be a negative 3, a positive 1, a positive 4, and a positive 5. Range. Flip your pencil. Where does y exist? When y is negative 4, we have a value. When y is 1, we have a value. When y is 0, we have a value, right? Right here at 4. When y is 1, we have two values. And when y is 5, we also have a value. So that'll keep, take care of all of our values for range. If you're still confused, take, take a moment, look at these graphs, compare the domain to the graph, compare the range to the graph, and hopefully it'll clear up some of that. We'll see you tomorrow.